welcome. Dr. James Beckett, Sports Card Insights, here with Sean Barker and Mike Fruitman. We're going to hear about uh, their uh, infamous podcast, but uh, I've got a podcast here that you're listening to where you'll hear from them about that. And uh, thank you to my excellent sponsors, Tops Panini Upper Deck, Heritage Auctions, Huggins Scott Auctions, Burbank Sports Cards, Mike Stadium Sports Cards. Oh, wait a minute. Hey, I'm in a sponsor who also on their show had the other sponsor, Card Shop Guy, Burbank Sports Cards, too. And then Comsey. Dot com and Beckett uh, Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication. So welcome, guys. I Hi, love your podcast. It's, Thank you. I won't say it's the opposite of mine, but it's <laughs> longer and more sporadic. But you as well have some excellent guests, and I and it's and it's a it's a fun listen. So how did you get the idea for that? And welcome to the show. So thanks, thanks. And so Mike, I'll tackle the how did it get started. I think it started with me driving either to or from work. And I picked up the phone and, you know, it really, it was, I was bothered by the lack of what I call awareness and knowledge that exists in, in the collecting side of the industry, where there are a lot of people out there just throwing, throwing things against the wall to see what sticks. And I felt like that there was an opportunity given who Mike oh, is and oh, yeah. everything sticks now. Yeah, it does now. And so, you know, the whole goal was, you know, we want to inform and educate a bunch of people. And if we can entertain them at the same time, Mike and I have enough dynamics. We felt like the education was there. So I'm on the phone. I said, hey, I think we should start a podcast. And we meandered over names and stuff. And there it was. Mike, are you uh, affirming that story? Confirming it completely. And I, what I love about it is that we get both sides of the counter on the on the podcast. So you've got the shop owner side. I mean, literally, I do this 10 hours. I do this eight hours a day because now I'm closing at six instead of eight. I'm such a great dad. And, you know, I only go home and do it for another five or six hours every night. So you've got the card shop side, but but it, it's not quite counterpoint, but you similarly at the same time, you're, you're getting the collector side. And, and in one podcast for you to get both of those at one time, it, I, I don't know of anybody else doing that. Oh, how about Joe Davis, the collector and the dealer? Uh, I, I need to be more aware and see what Joe's doing. Yeah, maybe your attorneys should talk to his attorneys. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably got better attorneys. Well, he's a great guy. I wouldn't be, uh, he's pretty above reproach, I think, as you are. But uh, yeah. no, but I think he had that same thought that if I get yeah. a collector and a dealer, that interplay is interesting. Yeah. But uh, Sean is a different kind of collector than the Chuck is, uh, you know, Joe's uh, buddy. But again, longtime friends. So yeah. what, uh, w- when did you guys get to be friends and, and uh, establish this rapport that allows you to share a microphone? Actually, so, you probably don't even share a microphone. Yes. No, well, not anymore. And I have all the equipment at home, but we okay. can't use it anymore because of pandemics. I think Mike and I, our history is inter- interesting. I'm a Nuggets season ticket holder. And so Mike and I knew each other long before we knew each other. And then we have a mutual friend who hooked me up with Mike being a sports card shop owner because I was in playing around with cards at the time too. And so I meandered down to Mike's shop one day and you know, we struck it off. And honestly, to me, you know, th- that's a bald guy's barbershop. That's where the conversations happen. And you can, you can get into the things that are, that are relevant in the day. And it's, you know, cards are a lot of it, but the reason we do the podcast would work is because I sit in a shop and we'd have great conversations and we have, we understand each other's humor. We understand each other's strengths and weaknesses. And it's a bonus. So were you sitting near where he is in the, at the Nuggets games? I do now. At, before I came in from another entrance, but in the last three years, I kind of moved to, to basically all the, the 10 second line, like two rows up. And I, I walk by Mike every night for games. Absolutely. Every night. He's leaving out the, the uh, private club Lexus in the back. He's even <laughs> sort of the, uh, So I'm, I'm the guard at the gate, letting him go right through and yeah, do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave it, leave the little club Lexus out. Yeah. I'm trying to keep it somewhat realistic for the, for everyone else in the world besides guys with too much money, not enough common sense. <laughs> uh, when you guys were thinking about doing this, did you think about, uh, did you make a kind of an ideal list of guests or did you think, I hope we can tackle an hour a week or did you, or were you just kind of free forming it? So when I, I, I went to po- you know podcasting university basically and looked at all the Q and A to build a podcast and I said, okay, first of all, how much time should we spend? And we kind of said 30 to 45 minutes is kind of our window. And then we said, well, how often? And what we said was, you know, initially I think we're going to do every other week. So like, you know, at tw- twice a month. And and it's kind of evolved from there. We did put down a guest list. I can tell you, you were either number one or number two on that guest list. And we got you on, but there's, we have a list and we're not through the list yet. You know, we have some goals to have some, some professional athletes on to get their take on collecting as well. And I think that will happen in short order. One of them might even be a Mets owner by then. So it, it kind of came about that way, but yeah, we sorted all that out. And then we just said, let's go wing it. Cause we know how each other are. I thought Rob Ferris was your number one choice. <laughs> <laughs> number one Rob, Rob would say he was, yes. Okay. So when you're saying I'm number one or number two, you really mean number two. I'm being, no, I'm being kind to make sure I'm not insulting anyone else either. <laughs> well, what other shows did you listen to for inspiration? I mean, were there other things either in the hobby or outside the hobby you thought, you know. Yours was one. There's, if your name was Mike, you could be Mike and Mike in the evening. Right. 
Yeah, yours was one. I mean, quite honestly, most of my listening, I listen to Mark Maron's podcast and I listen to a guy named Pete Holmes's podcast and a couple others, co- comedians, because I, I enjoy their journeys to get to where they are. And, you know, all those guys have a fear of the applause stopping. I mean, that's their big fear in life. And I've enjoyed hearing the catharsis and how that, you know, because they all those guys talk about the inner workings of stuff. And I like getting inside of things, understand how it works. And so a lot of what, you know, a lot of the premise for what we're doing is that same thing. How does this work? What's inside there? What happens? And demystifying it for, quite frankly, a lot of people who don't really understand it, they just, but they all think they can open a pack of cards and get $10,000 out of it. You realize that um, what you're doing is kind of like what they're asking the basketball players to do, like performing in a bubble. You got, you're coming on and doing your shtick and it's a lot of fun and people are observing, but you don't see the fans. You can't see that they're laughing or that they're clapping or, or doing backflips. And the podcast, not that it's a lonely thing, but you just, you speak into the microphone and whether it's audio or video, you're hoping you're connecting. Yeah. Speaking of that, I mean, what kind of connection uh, do you feel like you've had with some of your, with your listeners? I mean, are they, are you getting a lot of affirmation of doing more of this or we really love this? I mean, what's, what's the feedback you're getting? Cause it's, I'm sure you're getting some, you're getting some from me. I like what you're doing. Right. Yeah, Mike. Um, I can say at the shop. Uh, we're getting folks who, when, when a podcast pops, you know, I share it with my collectors and we're, you know, they're being very positive. They're, they're sharing that they enjoy the show. I mean, if they could put up with me on a shopping level, I guess they could put up with me, you know, to, to listen to me that extra time. Um, we're getting some folks who have never come in the shop before have found out about us. Good amount of calls from out of state, but uh, there's folks who have been here. I mean, the shop's been open for over 27 and a half years and we're still getting folks who have never found us before. So it's a nice avenue to, to find folks who, who maybe are getting into collecting or just never made, never crept over to Aurora. And one of the things that I like about this. It's not, you know, when we're doing this, it's not like, hey, this is what's coming out this week. You got to get in here. You're going to love it. It's going to be incredible. We've got a break on Thursday night. You got to get in on that. We're not, I don't, I, I don't, I'm not selling anything on this. Yeah. Sean's not saying, hey, look, here's my comp C. You should buy from me on there. We're, we're just talking. And, and maybe it's just more real that way. And maybe I'm leaving $100 an episode or five, five boxes I could be selling. I'd rather just talk and have right. people enjoy it from the standpoint of this isn't a, this isn't an infomercial. This isn't buy my cards, buy my cards. I'm always right. Listen to me. Yeah. It, it's just getting to know me. And I've always said a shop is an individual surrounded by cards. So if, if I'm good, then my shop's going to work. If, if I relate to you, it helps if you like the movie airplane, if you like the movie airplane, <laughs> just don't come to my door. it's not going to work. Yeah. So Jim, you know, I, what, what I've said before is I don't care if 20 people watch our stuff and listen to it or a thousand people do. It, we're doing this for altruistic means. A, it's a form of expression for both of us as an outlet to get our words out that we think are are relevant. If you like it, great. If not, you know that's okay too. I can tell you, I get inst- I get messages from people. You know, I'm, I'm one of the biggest breakers on Grand Slam collectibles. Nate Burns's place, and so a lot of those guys reach out, and nothing feels better than somebody said, "Hey, man, I took your advice in episode seven, and it's worked out great for me." And thank you. And we're not telling people to do and don't do stuff. We're telling them what the homework they should do to be capable of making good decisions. And then it's just about what they want. And that's all you can hope for is people own their own answers. Well, it just seems to me, you know, the times I've visited with Mike about this is that he has a couple of thrusts that he thinks are important. One is to yeah. support the, the LCS. Absolutely. You know, healthy there. And so there are local shop owners who are going to listen to what you're saying and say, thank you for that. The other is a little more difficult. And I'm just wondering about this because I don't feel like I'm connecting as well. Maybe it's just tricky. And that's kids. You know, Mike yeah. has a real desire for these kids clubs. Yes. And I think that's really, that's really wonderful. But I don't know that you're getting a lot of kids. I don't know that I'm getting a lot of kids, but they, they, they would get some benefit. But I just don't think it's, it's where they live. Yeah, I, I can tell you I've got, well, A, we're not on TikTok. So apparently that eliminates 99% of the kids in the world. But B, you know, I get, I get the messages on, on our Spotify channel and on, on YouTube that, hey, my son and I watched or listened last night. We, he loved it. And quite honestly, if kids don't get involved in the hobby, this is nothing but us best collecting a bunch of cardboard for other reasons than our own satisfaction. So it needs to have the generation behind us getting into the industry. And I think we're seeing that. One of the reasons I got in heavier was because I sat at Mike's shop and watched guys my age with their 10-year-old kid come in over and over again. I said, okay, this is like Star Wars. It's going to be every couple decades, there'll be three more movies, and it'll reinvigorate the franchise, and I'm comfortable with where it's going. So you know, I, I think they'll get into it, and I hope it's a reference library for people later. One of the most fun episodes that I've done in the last year was my Father's Day episode with Stephen, Rob, and Ryan yeah. Harris. Yeah. yeah, that was amazing. And there aren't that many multi generation yeah, exactly. uh, uh, families of distinction in this uh, industry. And that was really a lot of fun. Again, a podcast allows, and again, there's that's the thing, there's no copyrights or patents right. or trademarks. You guys can do that too. It's, it's, and you know what? If you interviewed those guys, you, it, there'd be a slightly different take. 
yep. because of your personalities and experiences. Yep. So uh, that's, the beauty, of that's the beauty of podcasting. And you know, if you and you can't script it. And people no. say, well, well, how do you script it? Right. By not scripting it. You know, that's right. not not going to work. Yeah, um, I agree. What when you're doing this? Have you have you? I've run into this once. Just wonder if you guys have run it where where a guest goes off the rails. And, well, that'd be Rob. <laughs> Uh, so a backstory on Ross Paris. I'm talking about the uh, slander stuff. It's been deleted. No, no. So you can't. That's why I don't do a right. live show. But yeah, we don't. Yeah, we haven't had any of that. Getting that kind, but out of a whole bunch of guests. I mean, and it right. wasn't mean spirited. It was just that right. guy, that guy took advantage of me, and he right. wouldn't to describe it in great detail. But you know, yeah. in America, you're innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. I give him a platform for that. Yeah, so we haven't had that, Jim. We did have. We had Nate, Nate Burns from Grand Slam on, and we did. You know, Nate and Mike are both infamous for being on the on the uh, Sports Card Radio Hall of Fame. Yeah. For you know, Mike for being a shill, et cetera. And so we let Mike, we let Nate have a little platform where he would go after them a little bit and give feedback to them. And so not you know, Mike and I, I mean Nate has a has a uh, edge to deal with it, but Mike and I's point was those guys could be an asset to the industry and really prove to be what short sellers are to the stock market, but they didn't choose to. Trying to be constructive. Yeah, yeah trying to be constructive and put like a positive spin on it. Uh, and so you're it sounds like we're uh, kind of on the same page. It, even yeah. when you're trying to have positive tone. That means that doesn't mean you can't talk about something that sure presents as negative. Correct. You that's right. Constructive. You can't be afraid of those sacred cows. You got to get after them if they're, if well, they're out there and have to be addressed. And nip it in the butt. Nip yeah, the exactly. Butt. One of my fears was uh, if I drank more, maybe it was a little bit, I don't know, it, it, losing my ability to purchase direct, which which manufacturer would cut me off first? Yeah. And so, so far, we've avoided that. We, we've just kind of stayed yeah. in the middle. And, and yeah. you know what? It's it's a good time in the industry right now. It's it's a it's we're kind of a it's a weird time. I mean, it's always a weird time in this industry. But we're we're doing well. And our biggest issue, I say, is, is not being able to get enough product. We I don't have an issue with Panini's quality control and, and yeah, redemptions and and Luca did he sign not? So I don't know. But <laughs> in, in terms of like in, in terms of the shops right now, we're, we're seeing and I've got a Facebook page for shop owners, and it's nothing but positivity. I mean, I used to. You used to go to the industry summit and it was, you know, a three or four day complaint fest. And, and now it's completely gone the other way. So it's a fun time to be in the industry with regard to, you know, my biggest, let, may it always be my biggest complaint that I can't get products. I don't want it to get to the point where I don't get any product, but let's get it to the point where, you know, we're, we're all complaining about not having enough instead of dying on too much. And if I don't sell today, it's going to be worth less tomorrow. We're out of time. Last question. Very quickly, Sean, what kind of street cred do you get? from being a famous podcaster and what <laughs> kind of credibility do you get with the card companies for being a podcaster? Does that in any way influence your allocations? Very <laughs> Mike, go ahead first. Uh, I, I, what influences my allocations? Nothing influences my allocations. Um, and, and in terms of cred, I actually hope that no manufacturer ever watches this because I hope that they're just working on improving their products and improving their companies. So A, I will answer by saying, there's nothing famous about what we're doing at this point. And B, I don't think I get any cred, but the, but the instant messages we get that says, thanks you for something to hear on our show. That's all that matters. Fair enough. Good, good note to end on. Thanks guys. Keep up the right. good work. Thank you. Enjoy the hobby. Everybody be thanks, back Jim. again tomorrow with another episode. The